We will take a walk, a promenade, along this part of First Avenue, which it was called Bohemian Broadway. Uh, there is, that's an area between the East 65th Street to East 79th Street, First Avenue, and our ethnic was located in this area, including the York Avenue, which previously was called Avenue A. In 1853, the first organization was an insurance society, Bohemian Benefit Order. In 1884, the first Bohemian National Hall was located on at East 5th Street. I will explain why this was first in the lower east side of Manhattan. In 1892, the Bohemian Benevolent Literary Association, BBLA, that we are many of us members, was established. In 1896, the Sokol Hall at East 71st Street was erected for 50 to $1,800. In 1896, this building, the present Bohemian National Hall on East 73rd Street was erected for almost three times as much, for $150,000. In 1970, there was a gradual decline of this Bohemian National Hall. It fell into disrepair, and um, the reason was that, that many of our countrymen or country people moved out of Manhattan because the real estate became too expensive, and they moved to Astoria, Queens. Um, in 2011, we were fortunate enough to transfer the Bohemian National Hall to the Czech government, which safeguarded us with using a third floor of this building. The uh, migration to this area started in mid-19th century. These were immigrants from Central Europe who were arriving to the South Street seaport, and because the closest area was the Lower East Side, they settled around the Tompkins Square. So when I will be showing you later the addresses of the first pubs and inns of, of, of Czechs in the area, they were uh, in the Lower East Side. Ninety percent of Bohemians came from the area around Kutná Hora, Sedlec. There was a big tobacco industry uh, working for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The pay was miserable, and they were they were attracted to New York by domestic cigar makers who were called Dotnikarzy. They were making cigars. There were whole families of the Kutna Hora immigrants lived in basement apartments in this area, and they were rolling cigars from the Cuban tobacco leaves. This was a hard work, long hours. The whole families work on, on it. The pay was relatively reasonable because the food was not very expensive. And these people saved money, and with the rising wealth, they decided to move up. So they moved uptown to the Upper East Side, which then became the Bohemian, um, Bohemian Broadway. The cigar makers were uh, the inventive uh, people because during the day they worked hard rolling the cigars and in the evening they participated in the social clubs, in, in the lodges, and um, many of them were musicians or they were actors in the voluntary theaters. The, 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 the role, the saying, so check the musicant, each Czech is a musician, applied to here. There, there was a multitude of volunteer theaters in this area. 
the checks were holders of bank accounts. Finally, when they got settled down, they owned real estate. There were check firemen, check policemen, check mailmen, funeral homeowners. Some of them you can still see until now some check names here. The the talk on the sidewalk in, in the streets of the Bohemian Broadway was mostly Czech at that time. These people paid membership dues from their meager income, but the dues were capable of supporting many of the societies and organizations. I listed here some of the most important lodges. We don't have time to go over them, but there were about 60 of them. Each of them had their own program. In 1900, the New York Times reported there were over 50 Czech societies in this area. There were dance clubs, bowling alleys, horse riders, rifle shooters, the French horn players, and musicians. There were about 27,000 Czechs living in the area around the Bohemian Broadway. The important part of socializing were the inns and pubs. The, there were several check-ins initially at the Lower East Side around the East Fifth Street and um, there was Hupa Checks in, which was very renowned at the East Fifth Street um, which was used by the Czech gymnasts, by the Turners who <coughs> did not have at the time any Sokol Hall, so they exercised in Hupa Checks in in the back room behind the bar. In 1884, Hubacek Inn was purchased by 25 societies for $2,500 with a generous loan from the so-called New York. This became the first Bohemian National Hall. So this was a predecessor of this building where we are sitting now. This was Hubacek at the East Fifth Street. First theater performance at that location was by the so-called drama club, which yielded a net profit of modest $46.70. There was a renowned Czech choral ensemble called Lao. You can see how, how many how many ladies, young ladies and not so young ladies participated in singing. Let's talk about Bohemian Benevolent Literary Association, BBLA, that's what many of us belong to. In 1892, it was founded as an umbrella fraternal organization for numerous societies and lodges. Sokol was one of the founding members who contributed to the BBLA establishment. Main mission of BBLA was to erect a spacious hall on the Upper East Side because the space at the inns, restaurants and clubs became too narrow for, for the multitude of immigrants who in, in between in the meantime moved in. The, the, BBLA organized frequent fundraisers, exhibits theater performances. As an example, a concert in 1892 at Central Opera House at East 65th Street was attended by Antonin Dvořák and his family <coughs> and <coughs> the net <coughs> profit of that concert was, I think, $200. There were the musicians who proudly participated at the so-called New York. <clears throat> this present Bohemian National Hall now was constructed by a renowned German architect, immigrant, uh, from Mr. Fraun. There was a restaurant, there were two bars, there was bowling alley, uh, there was shooting range, there was a Czech, a Czech school in, in two dedicated rooms in, in this building. <clears throat> in 1899, with the influx of immigrants, this building was already considered too small and an addition was to the east was purchased and also a movie annex at East 
Ninth Street, which was associated with the famous Lisa Minelli. New York Times, I told you already, there were 27,000 checks. In 1901, the famous violinist Jan Kubelik may uh, performed at Bohemian National Hall here, um, uh, and um, this ballroom for the concert was decorated with the insignia of 60 Bohemian societies and lodges. In 1922, another famous violinist, Vasha Prihoda, uh, uh, performed at Bohemian National Hall uh, for a proceed of, I believe, $204. <coughs> The, the schools were very important. In 1856, there was a first attempt at the Czech school. There were schools at the East 4th Street because initially the migration, the migrants settled at the Lower East Side. In 1866, a school was already started at the original Bohemian National Hall at the Fifth Avenue. Later on, the school moved into this building. The schools were administered by a governing board, which consisted of 51 active member lodges. And um, there was the, the, the most important funding uh, originated from the lodge Obec Zizhkovska. The, the schools published several textbooks, and um, I will try to bring a few of these Chitankas or textbooks to, to this meeting after, uh, after we adjourn. Um, there were 1,000 children that registered at that time for the school here. In 1901, the tuition was 25 cents per year. Uh, I remember that a concert of Vasha Prihoda yielded about $200, right? Um, 25 cents per year, the education materials were free. The, the schools participated at ethnic festivals. The, the, there was a child troupe, Pishci Abubenici, fives and drum, drums that belonged to, to the school system here. An important uh, uh, means of congregation were ch churches and newspapers. Now, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, which was uh, administered by Sokol Orel, was later demolished. It was replaced by Jan Hus Presbyterian Church on East 74th Street, which is still there. That, that was, by the way, the, the important um, uh, location for Pastor Kenneth D. Miller, who wrote, who was a missionary with the Czechoslovak legions in Siberia, and, and who wrote the diary which was which was published for, from from Siberia. Saint John Nepomucene, East 66th Street, now mostly for Slovaks. The first daily was by Mr. Chapek, but it bankrupted with the loss of. At $1,200. 1870, New Yorkske Listy. 1878, Jelnitske Listy were moved to New York from Cleveland, another important city for our ethnic Cleveland, of course, Chicago, most of all. In 1879, the New York Sokol published Sokol Americki. We need to also mention Kochik restaurant at the East 70th Street because it hosted the Czechoslovak radio during the first Czechoslovak Republic. <laughs> Now, uh, some of the, the most important restaurants here, which the old timers uh, probably managed and remember, I remember too. Zlata Praha, First Avenue and 73rd Street, just across the corner from this building. The Ruch was at East 72nd Street, and Vashata, a very famous name in, in restaurant, in Mang Czech restaurants, was on East 75th Street. We need to mention the Masaryks and their role in our ethnic life. In 1878, Tomáš Masaryk, at that time a professor at the University of Vienna, um, was arrived to New York on steamboat Herder, Herder. And right away he, he traveled to Morisania in Bronx 
to for, for a wedding with Charlotte Garrig, the, uh, after who this was his first lady uh, later on, the, um, after who uh, he acquired the second uh, main name. In 1902, Masaryk had an important address at so-called New York. At that time, he was a scholar at the University of Chicago, where his scholarship was funded by the wealthy industrialist Richard Crane, who had the big business in Chicago. <clears throat> In 1918, Masaryk had a speech at Sokol, New York, and later at the, at, the, at, at the same almost time at Carnegie Hall. Now, these speeches mobilized our ethnic groups so that thousands paraded from Sokol, New York to Bohemian National Hall and from there to the Plaza Hotel where Tomasz Masaryk addressed the crowds from the balcony. An, an interesting thing is that at that opportunity for the first time was unfurled the new flag of Czechoslovakia which was designed by the librarian of Sokol New York Josef Knedlhans. Uh, about Masaryk and, and New York, we need to also mention that Jan Masaryk, the son of Tomasz Masaryk, became later charge d'affaires of, of Czechoslovakia, and he uh, had an important speech here at, the, at this Bohemian National Horium. During the World War II, Jan Masaryk, at that time an exiled foreign minister in Danish London government, frequently uh, visited uh, New York City to the enjoyment of New York socialites because Jan Masaryk was, was a very good socialite. <laughs> A good, good politician, diplomat. He was a son of Tomas. <laughs> How about Slovaks in New York? <clears throat> the interesting thing is that, as with the Czechs, the first society, uh, the first, first group, was an insurance group. It was Slovensky Samostatny Podporny Spolok in, in Disease. In 901, Sokol, New York, the Czech part here, helped and supported the, the, the Slovaks in New York to establish a new fifth group of Slovak Sokol. And so Slovak, the Slovaks here then had a Slovak Sokol library. There was Slovak Sokol um, Supreme Lodge. And there was a Slovak Sokol located at the East 70th Street. I was told that that is is now a restaurant or a grill bar. The, the Slovak women were organized in the second group of the Slovak Sokol. There were, there were really good relations between the Czechs and Slovaks here because they already organized trips and, and excursions to the environment of New York City, and uh, they called themselves Czechoslovaks. So uh, this, this was the way how the, how the origins of, of the Czechoslovak uh, understanding arrived. So uh, am I, uh, according to Slovak, the St. John Nepomucene uh, church was on the East, uh, still is on East 66th Street. The Lutheran, Slovak Lutherans were uh, and still attend the Slovak Evangelical Church at the East 20th Street. In 1918, in February, in this building, there was a um, National, national world here. There was a congress of Slovak Liga, Slovak League, the, the most important and most ancient Slovak organization uh, in the United States. We should also mention that in 1936, Slovak American Sokols had a slit, a convention uh, attended by more than 15,000 of Slovak Sokols at the Madison Square Garden. Gardens, which this this meeting, this led was chaired by Milan Hoja, who was the prime minister of the first Czech, Czechoslovak Republic. During World War One, this building was important in organizing sales of Liberty bonds. 
and um, the, the, the sales uh, acquired half a million dollars. The members of so-called New York volunteered uh, to the U.S. Armed Forces. So we can justly say and proudly say that New York is the birthplace of Czechoslovakia. Thank you. Thank you.